Hello everyone, today we'll be taking a look at the MobaPad M6 HD, which promises to be the best Joy-Con option for your Nintendo Switch. It has HD rumble, Hall Effect sticks, and it's fully mechanical. There is also the MOA pad carrying case made specifically for these controllers. There is also a cost-benefit version, the M6S. The main difference is that the HD version has Omron branded switches, it is colored white and it has HD rumble. The standard version has regular rumble, regular branded switches and it's not white. In the box you get two additional faceplates with an octagonal gate. And you get a cross-shaped D-pad as well. The MobaPad M6 is quite chunky, which makes it more comfortable than regular Joy-Cons. And what's up with these numbers here? Seems like it's a secret message. If you know what it means, leave the answer in the comments. Starting with the button, as I mentioned before, they are fully mechanical. And they won't sink too flat with the shell. You have the SL and SR buttons. And the analog sticks has a metal shaft and anti-friction rings. They are also removable, but it won't receive different heights in the box. In the back you have one back button. And there is a texture, but the shell is entirely made of plastic. The shorter buttons and triggers are my second favorite thing on this controller. They're super responsive and very easy to press, with a satisfying click. The trigger is also much larger than the original Joy-Con. And they have an angle too. And my favorite thing is the D-pad, which again is super responsive, super easy to press, and it's on par with top tier D-pads like the Mechanic G5 and the Fly Digi controllers. Pay attention to the sound and you will see that when you press the diagonals, you can hear the two switches being triggered at the exact same time. This is the first controller I reviewed that has mouse switches for the D-pad. Because of that, the D-pad is super easy to press and it's more responsive as well. And you can use this controller sideways too. The back button is also accessible with a sideways grip.
This controller does not come with an extra rail, but you can use any other standard Joy-Con rail and it will work with this controller flawlessly. It fits perfectly in this charging rail from the GameCube Joy-Cons. And you can find these rails for very cheap online. And here's how to remove the faceplate. Removing the analog stick reveals the K-Silver Hall Effect module. And you can quickly swap between the circular and the octagonal gate. This is more suited for fighting games or adventure games. It's super easy to remove and swap back and forth between the faceplates. To change the left faceplate, you'll have to remove the D-pad. But if you have the cross-shaped D-pad installed, you can remove it more easily. And the cross D-pad is just as good as the disc D-pad. There is also this hole on the side making it easier to remove it. Now speaking about the stick protectors, I have three models of the switch size and two models of the full size. The first one fits well, but if you push it too hard they will fall off. They will be okay for light gameplay, but if you are more aggressive it is not a good option. The second one is even more loose. And the third one doesn't even fit. For the full sizes, this one is completely loose. And this other one is the best fit so far. It won't come out if you push it harder but the problem is that it spins in place. Now let's take a look at the case. Inside there is this slot for storing your Switch games and you can place a power bank here. 
If your power bank is large as this one, it won't fit. And I tried fitting two Joy-Cons here, but it won't fit. If you force it a little bit, they will fit in place, but still the analog sticks won't sit flush. My original Joy-Cons wiggle a bit when installed on the Switch. But the M6 is completely solid. And the grip is very, very good. The back button is right under your middle finger. but you can position your fingers in a way that you won't press them by accident. And it looks just so good with this custom back shell, what do you think? It is compatible with the kickstand, and actually it works better than the original Joy-Cons. Because these Joy-Cons are larger, you can actually regulate the angle. Almost as close to a 90 degree angle. You cannot do this with the original Joy-Cons. It fits perfectly on the Switch dock too. And if you have an external dock like this Genki Covered Dock 2, it is even better. With an external dock, the switch won't have any space for the air ventilation under it. But the N6 creates a small space under it. Testing in games, it works perfectly well and it has motion controls. and you can remap buttons and record macros to the back buttons. There is a turbo function too. And turbo speed can be adjusted. This Joy-Con also has NFC and it can read amiibos.
testing the D-pad, as I expected, it is a very good D-pad. You cannot hit the diagonals by pressing only on one direction, but notice that as soon as my finger enters the diagonals, it is registered properly. And the cross D-pad is just as good. There is also a center pivot and you can't hit all four directions at the same time. Now MobaPad has been trying to replicate the original Switch HD Rumble. They tried it with the Qi2 and the M9, and today we'll test all of them once again. Testing the analog sticks, I found a small inconsistency. It does not have cardinal snapping, but it has that weird magnetism towards the center on the axis. It's not a big issue as it does not remove precision from your circular movements, and I didn't feel this inconsistency while playing. The center dead zone is very small, and it can be adjusted. I'll show that later. And the octagonal gate is decently aligned in all directions. That center magnetism though is a bit weird. Previous MobaPad controllers didn't have this issue. So I reached out for MobaPad and they suggested performing a calibration.
and you can see that even after calibrating the issue still persists. I also tried using the MobaPad app to update the controller. But even on the latest firmware, it is still present. They can fix this in the future if they want, but currently it has no solution. Speaking about the app, the MobaPad app is pretty solid. You can test buttons and configure it on the go. And now, for the teardown time, you have to remove the faceplate and you have 4 screws. After removed, you can unclip the side of the controller. Here we can see the construction for the back buttons, and the battery which has 500 milliamps. As I mentioned before, the M6 HD has Omrom switches. These are high quality switches. And we can see that the triggers has a metal pivot. On the other side, we can see the Hall Effect sensor and the NFC reader. And the face buttons uses Omrom switches too. And here's the fixed button layout. On the other side we have a similar construction with the only difference being the D-pad. And for my final thoughts, the M6 HD is the definitive replacement for the original Joy-Cons. Apart from the infrared cameras, it can do everything that your regular Joy-Con can with a better quality. The mechanical buttons feels better than the ones on the Joy-Cons, and you have an actual D-pad this time. The HD Rumble is a perfect replica of the original one, apart from a few issues when you have four controllers simultaneously connected. This and the magnetism in the axis of the analog sticks are the only things keeping me from giving a perfect score for these Joy-Cons. Still, I definitely recommend them if you're tired of the original Joy-Cons and want a more robust option. And that's it for today's review. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.